Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new character build video with me Sherman. Today guys, I bring you the Divine Paladin uh, Templar. So, before I get started, disclaimer, this is a role play, casual play build. It is not for meant for meta play. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into the story behind this character. So the, the story behind the Divine Paladins is that they uh, follow the Divine Orders. So they, they worship things like Meridia and Azura and different things like that. They, they, they follow under that, that uh, guidance of more divine um, teachings. So they use a lot of divine magic in their playstyle to help aid and support their allies. They're more support tank than they are anything else. Um, their primary role is tank, then support, then damage dealer. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at this character. So with this, we are a divine paladin. Um, we are a Templar with it, and I chose High Elf. Now any race can play this character fine. Um, the, the magic races are gonna work more effectively for it because it's more of a magic based build than a stamina based character. Now Dark Elves work really good for this. High Elves, Bretons, Argonians work the best. Um, the stamina based races can still play this and be effective, but not as effective magical wise. So, all right, now let's get into this. So for being a high elf, I put 34 into max health and 30 into stamina. This gives me 22K max magicka, 33K health, 23K max stamina. I do have a 999 magic recovery with a 430 health recovery, 6, 6, uh, 611 stamina recovery. Don't worry about your stamina too much because you're gonna do a lot of heavy attacks to get resources back. And I'll show you when we do the play test in the dungeon um, of that. So we have a 1967 spell damage with a 19% spell critical. We have a 20.95 weapon damage or 20.95 weapon damage with a 28.1% weapon critical. We do have um, 21,795 physical resist with a 23,259 spell resist. And that is unbuffed. When we buff up, we actually go to 3129. All right, moving on down here. We are using, now if you wanna play this as a, depending on what kind of damage dealer you wanna play, if you wanna play more physical damage with magic, you are gonna take everything out of health and put it into stamina. Now, if you want to play more Magicka damage, take the 34 out of here and put it in a Magicka and kind of split the two so you have an equal amount of magic and Stamina in the, in the build. Then use the Thief Mundus Stone for higher damage capabilities. Now, if you want to play this character as a healer or a support character, you're going to take everything out of Stamina and Health and put it into Magicka. Now, remember, this character can play primarily a tank, can be support or healer, and can be a damage dealer. Moving on, we are using the Lord Mundestone to increase our max health by 2230. We do have minor intellect, minor fortitude, and minor endurance on our front bar because of restoring aura, and then we have sanctuary because we are using the sanctuary set. This increases healing received to 12 by 12% 12 to 11 group members. We do have the max um, tri-step food. This gives you max health, magic, and stamina. This is the food we, we will use all the time with this character. Right, now moving on into the inventory. When you're playing a tank, your primary food choice is going to be tri-step food. And this is so you can take advantage of that higher um, resource return in your potions. Now. If you're playing this character as support, you're going to want to use the Spellcaster Pots. You can also play a magic a kind of damage dealer, which is nice, so you would still use this. And then you can also play a Stamina Damage Dealer, and you'll want to use the Warrior uh, Power, or the Stamina Power Pots. So Spell Power Pots, Stamina Power Pots. And that's pretty much it for those. Moving on to the sets now, starting with our monster set. Because we're a Divine Paladin, our focus is more on group support and keeping people alive. So we we play very priest like. We 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 are we we play very support type. So our our monster set we use is called Sentinel of the Rakuzma. Whatever. <laughs> 
And we use this because the one piece adds healing done. And then the, the two piece, when you heal yourself or an ally, you have a 10% chance to summon a Dweemer spider that heals for X amount of health and restores stamina to you and your allies within five meters every second for eight seconds. This effect can occur once every 15 seconds. Now the nice thing about this is because it lasts for eight seconds, this is how we can maintain resource management. One of the ways we can re maintain our resource management when we're playing in a dungeon or a trial. Now, moving on to the next setup. We are using the Gladiator set. Now this is a kind of a, people will question this. Why did you choose this? And the reason I chose this is so this way when I play stand, like more physical damage based, I have a set for that. So I can get weapon critical on the two and three piece. The four piece gives me weapon damage. And then the five piece, when you target, when your target is under 25% health, you get a 1800 weapon damage to your light and heavy attacks. This is just to boost my ability to do damage when I'm playing solo and stuff, when I'm not in a group. The next set we use is called the Sanctuary set. Now this adds max health, it adds more healing taken to you, and it adds max magicka. So this is gonna boost your magicka pool by a thousand. And then on top of that, increases the healing received by 12% for you and up to 11 group members within 10 meters of you. So this is how you can keep yourself alive, but you can also aid your allies when you're playing more support. So you've got your two support sets and you've got your, your damage dealing set. And all these sets can be tanks type setups. So now we're going to look at the traits and the Mundus stones, or the traits and the Mundus, tra traits and enchants on these stuff, and we'll go over that. So starting with the monster set, we are using invigorating on the helm to give us that good resource management. But also we use tri-stats here so we can uh, take advantage of hybridizing our character into th the three different roles of tank, healer, damage dealer. The chest we're using heavy reinforced and this is since it's crafted, we can craft our, our setup to where we use a medium helm, a light belt and five heavy body pieces. This is a heavy armor setup. So we can use uh, this with the higher reinforcements to boost our resistances a little bit better. Now moving on to the other um, piece, the, the legs, we are using another tri-stat to hybridize again with invigorating for that greater resource management. So this allows us greater resource management for when we're playing support, or even if you're playing a damage dealer, like you wanna build more into stamina damage, you can use the tools to do that. So it's kind of nice. Now, the smaller pieces, this is where things are gonna get kind of confusing for some of you. On the belt and the shoulders, we are using health with sturdy enchants. This is so we have greater block cost reduction, but we also have that higher health main maintenance to our character. So now the next two pieces, the, the gloves and the boots. On the gloves, we have a max magicka enchant with a sturdy um, trait. The sturdy is gonna allow us greater block cost reduction. The magic is gonna give us a little bit more into our magicka pool so we can have a, a, a little bit better, more effective magicka pool for when we're playing support or playing healer. Now moving on to the boots, we do have a stamina enchant here with a sturdy trait. Of course, reduce block costs and then also the stamina there to boost our stamina pool. So we have that good mix of resources from the tri stats, the one magic of stamina and then the two health. Now moving on to the jewelry, starting with the rings, we are using two tri rune rings um, this is going to give us that ability to hybridize into all three roles, but then we have a weapon and a spell damage. The reason why is because we do use a lot of spell damage tools with our character, but we still want that capability to do some weapon damage for when we play more like that. So, and then moving on to the necklace, we are using an infused magic recovery. This is to give us that higher... Um, effect on the enchant so it enhances the enchantment by 60 percent so we get that higher mag recovery now moving on to the weapons the shield is sturdy with a tri-stat enchant this is to allow us better blocking capabilities but also higher um capability at playing the three roles damage uh, damage dealer and support 
Now, with the sword, we use a Nernhone weapon with a weakening enchant. Now, while people are going to say, why do you use Nernhone on a tank? Well, the reason I'm using Nernhone on a tank is so I can boost my weapon and spell damage. So no matter what role I'm playing, whether I'm playing a support character or I'm playing a damage dealer, I have the tools necessary to do that. The reason I use weakening is so I can also, with my minor maim, keep weakening also applied so it does they do less damage to me and my allies. Remember, my job is to protect and, and to, to, to it, as a tank, this kind of tank, a divine paladin, I'm more of a support tank. So I'm going to use every tool under the sun to help support my allies. And that's how I'm going to do that. Now on the back bar, I am using a maul of the sanctuary. I infused with a weapon spell damage. The reason why, again, to boost my ability to aid and support my allies with support capabilities and damage capabilities. So this way I can bring the, the tools necessary to the group for that. All right, now that I've done that, I'm going to go over the um, skills. And again, I take all Magicka Morph skills for this character. The reason why is because this character is built more towards a Magicka support character. So I use Crescent Sweep, I use Puncturing Sweeps, I use the Aurora Javelin, and then even in the Dawn's Wraith, I use Purifying Light. No Stamina Morphs whatsoever, all Magicka. The reason why is so this way I can take advantage of more Magicka tools in my group. So we use a lot of Magicka based abilities. Every ability we use is Magicka based. And then we use a lot of um, the passives from our class, like Restoring Fo Spirit. This gives us uh, reduced stamina and Magicka cost by 4% and ultimate cost. We also use take advantage of Prism, which gives us generates ultimate. And then and that's every three, uh, six seconds, three, gen three ultimate every six seconds for using like Purifying Light or any of these other abilities. And then the Adric Spear abilities, all of these can get increased critical damage for having one equipped. And then we also get Burning Light and we still get the 6% weapon damage plus the spell resistance here. All right, moving on through these into the weapons. So we are using a primary sword and shield back bar two-handed. You can use a bow if you want. I prefer using a two-handed and I'll, I'll show you why here in a minute. So Onslaught, we use this uh, to basically rip through the enemy's resistances because it will and it will give you an equal amount of resistance to yourself. But we only use this when we're playing damage dealer mainly. And killing an enemy with this uh, refunds the ultimate cost. So you can actually like fire this off multiple times. It's really crazy. Next, we have Wrecking Blow. This does a lot of damage. It, does da it also grants you Empower, which increases damage to your next light attack. We use Stampede, Brawler, Reverse Slice, and Rally on these skills here. And we also unlock all the passives. Now, on one-handed Sword and Shield, you can choose what you want here. But I prefer to use Spell Wall, Pierce Armor, Heroic Slash, Absorb Magicka, Shield Assault, and Reverberating Bash along with the passives. Now that we've done this, the weapon skills, we're going to move over to Armor, Passives, and Abilities. Um, so for the Armor, I do take the three Light Armor Passives because I am wearing one piece of Light Armor. And I can take advantage of like Spell Warding, the Evocation, and the Grace. And then Medium Armor, I take the top two and the bottom one. And I can take advantage of those as well with my character build. Heavy armor, we will use all the passives, and you can take either one of the morphs here. I use this for primarily when I'm PvP. And then all this stuff um, for different pr the different purposes that they allow. World skills, soul magic, you can do all these. It works out really well. And then guild skills, um, fighter's guild, I do take all the fighter's guild passives because I do utilize them. I use silver leash. I use smite, uh, Dawnbreaker Smiting, I use Turn Undead, Evil Hunter, all this for when I'm playing more stamina based. When I'm playing more Magicka based, I take more of the, the Mage Guild abilities and I will use the, the morphs and the passives from here. And I take uh, the cer these certain morphs to allow me to play better. Sigic Order, same thing. I take certain abilities out of here uh, to, to allow me to play the character more effectively as either a stamina damage dealer or a Magicka character or a healer, that kind of stuff. Undaunted, I take all the active abilities and learn them, and then I take the passives. <clears throat> and I use the ones that I think are going to best reflect my ability to play my character. Alliance War, Assault. 
We use Warhorn, Echoing Vigor, and Caltrops, so, uh, the support side of Alliance skills, or Alliance War skills, we use Barrier, Reviving Barrier, Efficient Purge, and Mystic Guard. And then on High Elf, you are going to take up the passives of whatever race you're playing. The reason I chose High Elf for this, though, is we get Spell Recharge. When you activate a class ability, you restore either Magicka or Stamina, whichever is lower. So since our Stamina is higher than our Magicka, we get more, we get Magicka back really easily. So we can focus on that kind of stuff, getting that resource back. Also, uh, anytime you use a channel or cast time ability, you get you take 5% less damage. So that's, that really helps when you're playing more damage orientated and you're using more channel abilities or you're playing the healer and you're using like Min Spirit from the Sigic Order. And then Sarah Bane's Boon, uh, this increases max magic and this one gives you increased spell damage. So it really works well into this build. Alchemy, medicinal use. When using a potion, resulting effects last 30% longer, and then provisioning, gourmand, and connoisseur. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to do like I did with the knight, um, with Meridia's blade. I'm just going to go through all the skills and kind of explain why I use them. So starting with the front bar here, we have pierce armor. Now this does a certain amount of damage up front, and it taunts the enemy. It also applies major fracture and major breach to the enemies. So it's basically your character skilled with sword uh, and shield really well, or weapon and shield. So you can break their armor and, and allow your, 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 uh, your teammates and yourself to do more damage to them. Next up, we use Heroic Slash. This does damage up front. It also reduces movement speed of the enemy by 4%. Now this only applies to one enemy, unlike Deep Slash where it applies to multiples. Also afflicts the enemy with minor maim, reducing their damage done by 15%. And with that uh, weakening enchant, we can also get that applied as well. And then we get the minor heroism, granting us one ultimate every 1.5 seconds for 9 seconds. <clears throat> Next up, we have Radiant Ward. Now this is our primary damage shield. It gives us a shield that's equal to X amount of damage, or absorbs X amount of damage for 6 seconds. The portion of the shield is, is based on your max health. And then nearby enemies take X amount of magic damage when the shield is activated. Each enemy hit increases the shield strength by 9%. This is a very powerful shield for tanking. Next up, we use Extended Ritual. Now this will cleanse us of negative effects, 5 harmful effects, and then it heals us for X amount of damage every 2 seconds for 24 seconds. Allies can activate the Purify Synergy, cleansing themselves of all harmful effects, and get health back as well. And this scales with your highest offensive stat. Next ability we use is called Radiant Aura. Now what this does is this basically applies minor magic of steel to every enemy within a 28 meter radius of you. So you cast this, every enemy gets minor magic of steel. While it's also slotted, you get minor fortitude, minor endurance, and minor intellect, increasing all three resource returns by 10%. Next ability we have, and this is a floater, you don't have to use this, you can use whatever you want. I like using it because it increases my weapon damage by 3%, and that is Flawless, or Dawnbreaker is Smiting. Now this does X amount of damage up front, X amount of damage over time, and it stuns enemies for 2 seconds. Moving on to the back bar, where we have our two-handed weapon, we have Wrecking Blow. Now you don't have to use Wrecking Blow here. Um, there's a lot of other abilities, like class abilities and stuff you can use, but this just allows you a little bit more damage output, and it also gives your next light attack uh, in power, so it does 40% more damage. Then we have Brawler. We have this here because any enemy you hit with it will do damage, but it also gives you a shield equal to X amount for 6 seconds, and each enemy hit boosts that shield strength by 50%. Next ability we have is called Purifying Light. This does magic damage when it hits the target, and then it copies 20% uh, of the damage that it takes over 6 seconds. Uh, basically, it, it, it copies 20% of it back to them, and they can take a maximum of 13,367. And then when the effect ends, a pool of sunlight remains attached to the enemy, healing you and nearby allies for X amount of health every 2 seconds for 6 seconds. Then we have Luminous Shards. This, you throw this out. Um, it does damage when it lands. It does damage over time for 8 seconds. It's also a synergy that gives Magicka or Stamina, whichever is higher, and then gives them additional Magicka or Stamina back 
to the lower stat. So this is a good way to help your other tank maintain resources or your damage dealers. So it's kind of a nice group support thing. Next, we use channeled focus. This is the same as rune focus or the uh, restoring focus, except this one gives you major ward and major resolve, increasing spell and physical resist, but it gives you magicka back every second. When standing in the ruin, your physical and spell resist is boosted by 50%. And then our final thing we have here is aggressive horn. This does um, <coughs> boost everyone's max magic and stamina within 28 meters of you for by 10% for 30 seconds. And it also grants ma major force to you and your allies by increasing your critical damage by 15% for 9 seconds. <coughs> Alright, and that is the skills we use. Now we're going to take a look at our CP, starting with the red tree. We have 56 in the ironclad. This is doing to reduce the damage you take from direct damage attacks by 20%. We have 10 in the spell shield, increasing your spell resistance by 10 by 1,003. We have 43 in the hardy, reducing your damage taken from physical poison disease damage by 10%. 43 in the element of the defender, reducing your damage taken from flame frost shock and magic damage by 10%. 31 into thick skin, reducing your damage taken from damage over time effects by 13%. 40 into bastion, increasing the effectiveness of your damage shields by 16%. 19 into quick recovery, increasing your healing received by 5%. And then 28 into heavy armor focus, increasing your physical resistance by 542 for wearing 5 pieces of heavy armor. <coughs> Moving on into the green tree, we have 40 in the Warlord, reducing your break free cost by 16%. 16 in the Sprinter, reducing your sprint cost by 10%. 16 in the Bashing Focus, reducing your bash cost by 10%. And then moving on into the middle green tree, we do have 43 into Arcanist, increasing your mag recovery by 10%. And 75 into Tenacity, increasing your magic and stamina to return of your fully charged heavy attacks by 14%. With the 25 you get from wearing heavy armor, that is a 39 or 34%, is it 39% increase in resource return plus the base 30%, that's a 69% increase of resource return on heavy attacks. Moving on, we have 40 in a tumbling, reducing your dodge roll cost by 16%, 40 in a shadow ward, reducing your block cost by 16%. <clears throat> Moving on into the blue trees. We have a hybrid setup here. So we have 43 in a Blessed, increasing your healing done by 10%. 23 in an Elfborn, increasing your critical damage done and critical healing by 10%. 43 in an Elemental Expert, increasing your Flame Frost, Shock, and Magic damage done by 10%. And then moving on to the middle tree here, we have 35 in a Physical Weapon Expert, you, which increases your light, heavy, and two hand, uh, light and heavy attacks with two handed, one handed, and shield, dual wield, bows and werewolf form by 20%. We also have 40 in a Master at Arms, which increases your direct damage done by 16%. With this, we do get a Reposit, and this is whenever we block an melee attack, we can redirect 15% of the damage back to the enemy, or with a 15% chance, we can redirect some damage back to the enemy, dealing 5,024 physical damage, and that can happen every five seconds. And then we have Butcher, which increases your damage done with light and heavy attacks by 5% to enemies below 25% health. So this means when you get that extra 1800 weapon damage for those light and heavy attacks, it's boosted by 5%. Or 25%. Moving on, we have 43 in the Mighty, increasing your physical poison disease damage by 10%. Where's that a 20? Is it 25%? 5% for uh, to enemies below. Yeah, 5% extra damage. So this will increase your physical poison disease damage by 10%. 23 in a precise strikes, increasing your critical damage and critical healing with stamina abilities by 10%. And then 20 in a thaumaturge, increasing your damage done with damage over time effects by 9%. Now the reason why we have the precise strikes and the elfborn with the 10% there is because we are a Templar. Being a Templar, you get this um, class passive called Piercing Spear, which increases your critical damage with anything, Magicka or Stamina, by 10%, as long as you have an Adric Spear ability slotted. That's why on both bars, we have an Adric Spear ability slotted, is so we can take advantage of that to give our allies uh, damage over time, or to increase our damage done to enemies and stuff, so we can boost our damage. All right, now that I've shown you guys the CP, 
the skills, the gear, all that kind of stuff. What we're going to do is I'm going to take this into the depths of Malatar Dungeon, and I'm just going to play through it like I would as a tank. Um, I'm not going to change anything. So you guys can see how effective and survivable this thing is in that situation. And you guys can decide from there, hey, do I like this tank? It's really cool. I like the idea. The concept's really fun. That kind of thing. And the fact that you get all this extra healing done because of the Sanctuary set and all the, the things that, a, that comes with the Templar, it really plays well with this. And the reason I use a two-handed maul on the back bar is so this way when I play stamina damage, more stamina based, I have some a weapon that can actually rip through enemy resistances and do damage. So And that is what this thing looks like so far. Now we're going to go up against the boss and we'll, you guys can see what it looks like. This thing, to me, out of all the uh, kind of tank builds that I've made in the past, this is a lot of fun because it's so, it's so unique.
Alright, have you guys seen enough? I think I have. I'm gonna try and let this guy kill me now. I'm gonna go over here and let him just puke all over me. But yes, I can even solo this guy. It takes a long time for me to solo with this character, but I can do it. But that, my friends, is the Divine Paladin. A character that is made to basically be a support tank. And I hope that you guys like it. I love playing this build, honestly. A lot of these newer builds that I'm working on are really, really fun for solo play. They're really fun for group play. They're really fun for different types of play. Like this character being primarily a support character, I can play them as a healer, a damage dealer, or a tank. And it works out really well. Primarily tank role, damage dealer, or primarily tank, support, damage dealer. Remember that. And that, my friends, is it for the video. So you guys know what that means. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can subscribe. Other than that, thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy might see you in game. Bye.